Welcome to Textbook Engineering Problem, where we explore complex engineering problems and discuss different methods for solving them. In this video, I'll be breaking down a problem and discussing different ways to tackle it. However, keep in mind that there is no one correct path for some of these solutions, and I encourage you to share your own insights and thoughts in the comments. Together, we can learn and improve our problem-solving skills. So sit back, grab a notebook, and let's dive into today's problem. Today we're working on problem number 4.70 from Elementary Principles of Chemical Processes, 3rd edition. The problem statement says, N-pentane is burned with excess air in a continuous combustion chamber. Part A, a technician runs an analysis and reports that the product gas contains 0.270 mole percent pentane, 5.3% oxygen, 9.1% carbon dioxide, and the balanced nitrogen on a dry basis. Assume 100 mole of dry product gas as a basis of calculation. Draw and label a flow chart. Perform a degree of freedom analysis and perform a degree of freedom analysis based on atomic species balances and show that the system has negative one degrees of freedom. Interpret this result. I've written the flow chart here. We've got our n-pentane going into the reactor here and we've got air going in and then we have a fire and then products are coming out we have stream number four which is just the water coming off there and then we have um, the dry product gases stream number three coming out there they give us that uh, we know all these things and then I've highlighted in red all of the unknowns so we have three unknowns in this problem and we have four atomic balances so we have one degree of freedom. The system is over-specified. Sorry, I think I said one degree of freedom. I meant to say we have negative one degree of freedom, right? Um, so the, the, the system is over-specified. Um, so that means that we could take away one of these knowns that we have, and, uh, and uh, we would still be able to calculate um, all of these unknowns. And then we could use that answer to compare what we got. Okay, the reason I point out this one is because it really makes me suspicious right off the bat when I see when I see a, a value like that because this is like in the one percent range. This is in the one percent range, and then they didn't even measure this one. This one's like in the tenth of a degree range or the hundredth of a degree range, right? So it's like really small compared to the other measurements that they did and so right away I'm kind of like well how do they know that that's accurate maybe they have a method for measuring that and it's really accurate um, but maybe their method of measuring that once you start getting into really small mole fractions it might be really difficult to actually get an accurate measurement of what this is so um, kind of sends up my red flag sensor here okay so for part B Use balances to prove that the reported percentages could not possibly be correct. Okay? So we've got our atomic balances that we can do. There are four of them right there. And uh, this is our reaction equation. Let me go ahead and um, balance this in front of you guys right away so you guys can see how to balance that. I did this before, but I'll, I'll do it again so you guys can see it. We have five carbons on the left side, so we need five carbons on the right side. Then we have um, 12 hydrogens on the left side, so we need 12 hydrogens on the right side. Okay. Now on the left side we have 10 plus 6, that's 16. 10 plus 6, that's 16 oxygens, so we need 16 on the left side. And now this equation is balanced. Okay. So you see how I started with carbon, then I did hydrogen, then I did um, oxygens on this side, and then I calculated how much oxygen we needed on the left-hand side. Okay. For every mole of pentane we have going in, we have five moles of carbon. Then for every uh, mole of and for every mole of carbon dioxide we have going in, we have one mole of carbon going in. For every um, mole of for every mole of pentane we have going out, we have five moles of carbon going out. 
Okay. Now for oxygen, for every mole of oxygen we have going in the air, we have two moles of oxygen um, atom. Okay. For every mole of carbon dioxide, we have two moles of oxygen. For every mole of water, we have one mole. For every mole of oxygen going out, we have two moles going out. Okay. Now we're doing our nitrogen balance. We have a certain amount of nitrogen going in, and that will equal the amount of nitrogen going out. That one's pretty easy. Um, for hydrogen, for every mole of pentane going in, we have 12 moles of hydrogen going in. Okay. For every mole of pentane going out, we have 12 moles of pentane going out, or 12 moles of hydrogen going out. And then for every mole of water going out, we have two moles of hydrogen going out. Okay. So that's how you do those balances. I have my ins on the left side and my outs on the right side for all of those. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume I'm going to assume that my um, XP3 and my balance of nitrogen are unknown moving forward. Um, and then we're going to calculate and see what we get based off of the numbers they initially gave us to show that this the numbers that we initially got are not going to match up with with uh, what we calculated. Okay, so in this part what I did is I highlighted in red in red I highlighted all of the um, unknowns and I numbered them and you can see that we have a total of five unknowns. They appear multiple times in these equations but we have five unknowns and we have um, five equations. One of the equations is a process specification that's kind of hidden when they say and the balance is nitrogen. What they mean is that if you sum all the mole fractions they should sum to one. Okay so that's our fifth equation right there. Okay okay you can take a look at these results and you can see that um, when we solve this system of equations um, the uh, the value that we calculate for the how much pentane is coming out, the mole fraction of that, the mole fraction of that is off by two orders of magnitude. Um, so, so this measurement is way off. Um, and so small inaccuracies in these measurements or in the other measurements that they gave to us that we're using to calculate what these things are um, can add up and make these small values um, to change into something like astronomically bigger than that or way smaller or something non-physical. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's uh, something you have to be really careful of when you're measuring these things. So you can go back and say, hey, can we verify these measurements, see if these, uh, these are correct? Um, so uh, then this can help you find out if something's wrong with your process or if there's just something wrong with the measurement. Okay. So for part C, it says the technician reruns the analysis and reports new values of 0.304 mole percent pentane, 5.9 percent oxygen, 10.2 percent carbon dioxide, and the balanced nitrogen. To verify that this result could be correct, and assuming that it is, calculate the percent excess air fed to the reactor and the fractional conversion of pentane. Okay, so basically we just have to use the same equations and we plug in our values that they gave to us, the new values for these things. Um, of course we can leave this one out because um, we're assuming that that's unknown and then we can compare the given value to the actual value. So um, we calculated this and we and we were given this. Hey that's reasonable, that's pretty darn close, you know, calculating in like maybe there's a little bit of measurement error, right? Um, so yeah, we don't know what happened during that measurement but something happened. Um, to make it, you know, the first measurement we did way off, okay, but this one's much closer, so yeah, I'm satisfied that that's, that's good enough. Okay, so using our calculated values, not the measured values, I'm going to go ahead and calculate what the uh, excess air is. Okay, so then the excess air <clears throat> is given here, okay, and uh, how you calculate that is you find out how much um, 
moles of pentane you have going in and how much oxygen would you need in order to fully combust that. So you'd need 18.8 .8 moles of oxygen to fully combust that. Well, how much oxygen was fed to the reactor? 22.2 .2 moles of oxygen were fed. So what's the excess? Well, that's this minus this. Okay, so it's 3.4 moles of oxygen excess. Well, that's excess oxygen. What's the excess air? Okay, excess air is, this is the moles of oxygen divided by what's the mole fraction of oxygen in air? That is 0 0.21. Okay, so then the answer of excess air is here. Okay. Now the fractional conversion of pentane. Okay, I think I think um, in this one I'm going to use the given value, so not the one that we calculated. And so the fractional conversion, how much pentane was, convert, uh, was consumed in the reaction, that is 87% of the pentane was consumed in the reaction. Okay, um, so you have how much pentane is going in, how much pentane came out. That will give you how much is consumed. So how much was consumed divided by how much you put in is the fractional conversion, okay? So that's 0.87, okay. And that is it for problem number 4.70. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful in your problem solving journey. Remember, there are other routes you can take to arrive at the same correct answer, and I encourage you to leave a comment with any additional insights or questions you may have. Also, if you have any specific engineering problems you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. Your feedback is valuable, and I look forward to continuing the conversation with you. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more engineering problem-solving videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.